Hi my loves, I'm back again with lots of tips and tricks to help you create beautiful pastel drawings. First I want to make a special note on the use of our black pencils and our white pencils. Now we usually use small amounts of black but very important if you want to get a really dark deep rich black you need to go to a charcoal pencil. So I'm going to just do a little demonstration to show you the difference between your black pastel pencil and a charcoal pencil. So I'm not sure if you can see it really well on video, but believe me, look at the difference. The charcoal pencil is so much richer and darker. Just look at how many white pencils I have. It doesn't hurt to pick up a few extra because you'll be using them often. You'll be using white a lot because you need it for those highlights and it's very useful for blending and creating lighter colors. A little tip that I use to get some really bright white, even with my pastel pencils, is to use a stick of white soft pastel. Because it is so much softer than the pencils and has so much pigment, I can get some really nice bright whites. All the tools that you use with your other pastel materials can be used with pastel pencils. These big sponges for large areas. Smaller applicators can be used for more detailed work. Of course, you can use paper towel or tissue to blend with. I recently picked up some inexpensive silicone blending tools and they work pretty well. They're great for getting into small areas and areas that have fine detail. But my favorite blending tool is this one. I've had it for years and the silicone or plastic part is a little bit like an eraser but it doesn't flake and it's beautiful for blending because it doesn't take up much of the pigment. Most of the pigment is left on the paper. Now paper blending stumps or tortillas are also super useful for blending and if they get dirty you can simply use a piece of sandpaper to clean off the pigment. Okay, another one of my favorite blending tools is a brush pen. Okay, I know I have lots of favorites, but for pastels, this one is so easy to wash and maintain. A small house paintbrush is useful for brushing away debris and residue. Makeup applicators are inexpensive and work really well with pastel pencils. And of course we have earbuds. The best way to sharpen a pastel pencil is with a knife. Regular sharpeners are a no-no, especially the inexpensive ones. Okay, so when you're sharpening your pencils, uh, it's a good idea to use a container to catch all the bits of wood. Remember to sharpen away from yourself and be very careful, we don't want any accidents here. I found these small craft knives and they come in really useful for just smoothing out the edges of the pastel pencil. Using this little knife means that I don't lose a lot of pencil by cutting in too deeply. A way to get a fine point is to use a block of sandpaper. Now this is a sharpener that's supposed to be really good for sharpening colored pencils and it's received a lot of good reviews online. Okay so I've taken a big leap of faith and decided to sharpen the Color pencil in this new sharpener. The reason I use the Color is because it has a much harder core and so far so good. However I don't think I'd use my more expensive pastel pencils in this sharpener because they have a much softer core because they have a lot more pigment. I'll leave the name of this sharpener in the description below, just in case you're brave enough to want to try it. Okay, the next thing on our list are erasers. So erasers are really useful for lifting pigment. As long as you don't press too hard, pastel pencils are very forgiving. A kneadable eraser is super useful for creating fine points in order to erase really small unwanted details or mistakes. 
You can even use this fine point to create some intricate details on your pastel pencil surface. Remember, you can always cut larger erases into smaller pieces as needed. So the next thing is how to keep our work from smudging. Here I have a can of art quality fixative and I have a can of hairspray. And to be honest, I haven't noticed much difference. Now when you're using fixative, you can spray between each layer or you can wait till the end and spray the whole thing. Now let's talk about paper. There is a paper called glassine paper and it is used to cover and protect your finished artwork from getting dirty or smudged. Now the advantage of glassine is that it is actually waterproof but a great alternative is this wax paper or even parchment paper will work well. I also love to use parchment or wax paper when I'm drawing because you can actually protect your artwork from smudging and see how everything works together at the same time. Now, pretty much in every video I talk about paper and paper is so important because it really affects the result of your finished artwork. And as we know with art, you need to use the right paper to get the right result. Pastel papers like my tiens Pastel Matte, Strathmore, Fabriano and Windsor and & Newton offer great textured surfaces in a variety of colours and they are ideal for both beginners and professionals. You can also try velour paper and watercolour paper. Try a few and see which one you like best. Sounds like an idea for a video on paper reviews. Today I'm going to be using this Windsor & Newton pastel paper. This particular pad comes with black and white and lots of greys and neutral tones. Pastel pencils can work wonderfully with all the other members of the pastel family. We just have to use the right techniques and understand our materials. Let's take a look at them. What makes each material different is the amount of pigment, binder, clay and minerals that go into them. Pan pastels are made by compressing pure pigment with minimal binder into a cake-like form, allowing for smooth, almost dust-free applications. Soft pastels consist of high pigment concentration with minimal binder, resulting in a crumbly texture ideal for vibrant, blendable colours. Conte crayons are composed of a mixture of graphite or charcoal with clay and a wax binder, forming a much harder, more consistent stick suitable for detailed work. Charcoal is our most organic material. It is made from either willow or vine. It produces deep blacks and a wide range of greys. Now to the star of the show, pastel pencils. Pastel pencils encase finely ground pigments with binders, often clay or gum. They are wrapped in wood and offer the precision of a pencil. Now let's talk a little about which pencils are the best to choose. A few of the highest rated pastel pencils are Caran d'Ache, Faber-Castell Pitt, Stabilo Orthello and Derwent. These pencils are known for their high quality and high prices. Just a little important note here when you're looking for pastel pencils is to make sure they have good light fastness. Other well-known professional quality brands that are worth a try include Koh-i-Noor, General and Conte à Paris. They offer good performance and vibrant colour. Inexpensive brands of note include Calor, Lightwish and Pandafly. Compared to other pastel materials, pastel pencils create very little dust. If you're using pastels with an easel, here's a little trick. Fold a piece of paper and place it on the lower tray of your easel. This is a useful tool for catching all the debris and it's reusable. Now let's take a look at some techniques using pastel pencils. The first technique I'm going to do is show you how easy it is to blend pastel pencils. In this simple technique, 
all we have to do is lay two colors down side by side and once we've built up the colors and layers a little we can start blending the two colors together using the lighter color first and then the darker one if you want to make the color a little more intense Now the next thing we're going to demonstrate is some cross hatching and pastel pencils are a fantastic tool for this. You can get some really beautiful thin lines and you can continue to build them up as much as you like. And you can lay the lines down as thickly or as thinly as you like. If you want to create an image with lots of character and texture, cross-hatching is the way to go. In the next technique, I'm going to use the pencils with pan pastels. So first I'm going to lay down a layer of pan pastels and then I'm going to do some intricate details on top. Remember not to lay your base color down too thickly. If you do, it will make it difficult to place other colors and designs on top. With the very fine tip of a sharp pastel pencil, we can do some very fine detail. Look at that, beautiful. Can you imagine trying to get such intricate detail with your thick crumbly pastel sticks? Now I'm going to build up some small circles and squares to show you just how you can build up some interesting patterns and details with pastel pencils. Okay, let's get a little close up here. Here I'm demonstrating how to use a lighter version of a color to blend it smoothly. Now we've established just how useful and how versatile pastel pencils are, let's go ahead and do a demonstration. Now today we'll be drawing the two beautiful herons to show off just what you can do with pastel pencils. Let's see just how many techniques we can use. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. 